Hello and welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be looking at a new purchase, a Mac Mini. I'm going to be using this for doing my video editing moving on. Um, reason for that is that I've got a nook uh, that you can see in the top right corner. Just pulling it across now. I've been using that to do the video editing. I'm very good, but to be honest, it's not very good. So I'm moving over to a Mac Mini. So let's get this open and we'll talk about the specs. Forgive the dust on the shelf. I hadn't actually realized how dusty it was given I only dusted it like two days ago. It's ridiculous how quickly it's picked up dust. So getting the uh, security tags off it. On the inside, you've got the Mac Mini itself, which comes in the normal Apple packaging. A little bit of paper around, see-through paper around it. Very swish. Um, then underneath, you've got the power cord, and that is it. There's a little bit of paper in the bottom that's got your like warranty information I guess or whatever I didn't bother opening it um, half of it fell out oops uh, so we'll put all that back in I need the power supply so we'll get that on bot unraveled me fumbling with it in there for now. Go on. There we go. Right. So, in terms of size, the Mac Mini is a little bit bigger than the Nook, um, as you can see. A little bit bigger. Not much. Um, I just, this is the base model that I've gone for, so it's the 512, um, no not 512, the 256 gig SSD with 16 gig of RAM. Let's get this on wrapped. And the, re the reason I've gone with this is that I've actually ordered a dock which is turning up on Tuesday and a NVMe 2TB uh, drive. So the ports on the front, we've got two 10 gigabit per second USB-C ports, an audio jack on the front for input, no, well, for headphones, power supply, network port, HDMI, and three Thunderbolt 4s. On the underside, you've got the fan and the power switch, which, yeah, I really don't know why they put it on the bottom. It's a really stupid place. Uh, and as you can see, it's picking up fingerprints. Lovely. So I'm now going to get this uh, hooked up to uh, the receiver and get it powered on. And we'll see how long it takes to uh, get it set up. I also forgot to mention, um, I didn't buy the Apple keyboard for this. I'm actually going to be using the Logitech MX Keys keyboard. Uh, it's the one for Max, and I quite like the fact it's got backlit key, uh, keys on it. Uh, with the mouse, I bought a combo, uh, which was £200. I think at a minute on Black Friday, Amazon has it at 150 if you can find it. Um, but with me being in Gibraltar, can't get it delivered, so... Okay, so here we go, we're pairing up the keyboard. The mouse already paired really quickly. The keyboard took a couple of attempts for it to actually um, be picked up by the Mac. So I'm just entering the code now. And then we go through, we need to select language, which for me is uh, English UK. Region, I'm going to choose UK as well.
just going through the options while we're doing this. Uh, I'm not going to be migration, doing any sort of migration, so I'm going to choose not now. And then I've already created a separate iCloud account for this, so I'm just going to enter the details. Okay, authentication. Okay, now I've got to create a local uh, username and password for the machine. So I'm going to uh, have it tied to my iCloud account so I can reset the password if I need to. So here we go. Okay, so the account's now being set up. This only, this only took about 30 seconds, if I remember correctly. I'm going to use the keychain. This stage, I'm just clicking through continue to uh, actually get to the dashboard. I'm going to let the uh, disk encryption happen. Uh, I always choose a light background. Uh, I know some people prefer dark, so. But yeah, I'm going with the light. And there we are. Welcome to Mac. And that's dashboard. That took, what, five minutes from turning on? Uh, it might take a bit longer if you've uh, not actually created the iCloud account first. Um, or if you've got to do any sort of migration from a Windows machine. But, yeah, that's it. At this stage, it's just wanted to identify the keyboard that I've got, so I'm doing that. Now, next thing I'm going to do is do an iOS, or a Mac OS update. Uh, so, yep, there's an upgrade available, so I'm going to do that. Agree. Put in the password for the Mac password. And there we go, it's time to download. Now, I'm not going to bore you with this bit because it took probably five to six minutes to download. It then prepared, prepared the update, which probably took another 10 minutes, and then I think. In total, it was like a 20 minute um, install and a reboot. So, yeah, this is where I'm going to leave this bit. Okay, so we're on the nook. Uh, we're going to see how long it takes for DaVinci Resolve to actually start on this machine. So, I've double clicked on it, and away we go. there we go, it's opened. Okay, so on the NUC, I exported a project that I've already done before, and on the NUC, it took about 11 and a half hours to export to render. I kid you not. So we're gonna do a test on the Mac Mini to see how long DaVinci Resolve takes to open, which you've seen in the previous clip. instantly a lot quicker and then I'm gonna look at pulling in the project which does take me a couple of minutes because I've got to uh, get the files back in so bear with me a second
Okay, so this is the project. Uh, as you can see, everything's in place. You can see um, everything that I did on the project is there. You can see the little window with my face there. Um, this is in this is a 4K timeline, and I'm going to be honest, it's not as smooth as what people. Um, what other reviewers have actually stated it is doing 4K. Um, there's nothing super crazy going on, although the little window with my face in is probably what's causing uh, the skipping, shall we say. So you could, I could probably drop this down to uh, 1080p and it will run perfectly fine. Uh, but on the Nook, Vit doing anything ball. like this was painful, to say the least. The so, we, have, we are going to so like, play back. Um, I did play it back a little bit. It seemed fine. Um, it, yeah, just was a little skippy moving around. Um But yeah, as you can see, playback. Yeah. So we're gonna go and render it. So I'm doing nothing crazy with the rendering. Um, just gonna give it a name, give it a location. Now this is currently um, rendering on the internal drive itself. I'm going to run this again on Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, and see what the difference is. See if there is a difference using um, the 2 terabyte drive to host DaVinci and the videos. So we'll see. Uh, I believe the internal drive is, will be slower than what the 2 terabyte drive is going to be. So there might be a performance difference. I don't know. But we'll see. Main thing is the cost for the space. So yep, that all looks fine. I think I'm just checking to make sure there's nothing that I've missed. I'm keeping um, the frame rate the same as the footage. And the footage is 4K, so I've made sure that's still the same. So I'm going to send it to the render queue. And then I'm going to tell it to render all. And we'll come back when this is finished. Okay, so we're back. Uh, the render job's finished. I've finished watching the F1. And as you can see in the top right hand corner, it took one hour and two minutes to render a 20 minute video in 4K with um, color correction and um, the little window with my face in it so where people are saying oh it takes like 20 minutes to render a 10 minute video in 4k mm, don't know um i would say that's a no to be honest 